from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. And welcome back here on theCUBE, along with Justin Warren, I'm John Walls, and now we're joined by Peter Nickel, who's the CEO of Insta Cluster. Peter, good to see you this morning, sir. Thank you very much, John. And Todd too. Green, CEO of PubNub. Good to see you. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Uh, first off, let's just talk about what the two of you guys do, or specifically what Insta Cluster does and PubNub. Uh, Peter, if you would. Yeah, so basically at a high level, what Insta Cluster does is we help customers to build applications that have to scale massively in a reliable way. Massive scale means terabytes or, or petabytes of data or even more. Reliability means the application has got to be up and running all of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way we do that is we focus on technologies in the data layer and we allow companies to essentially outsource the management of those technologies to us. So they can focus on building their application, which is what they do best, and we focus on taking a lot of the complexity away which is helping to manage the technologies in the data layer. And the technologies that we focus on are basically in the area of storage, uh, search, um, messaging, and analytics. And those technologies are Cassandra for storage, uh, Kafka for messaging, Spark for analytics, and Elasticsearch for, for search. And we can manage all of those technologies in any of the cloud providers, including AWS, mm -hmm. And essentially, this allows customers to uh, outsource that and, and focus on their core business. And we've got some great customers, PubNub being one of our best customers, a hot startup in Silicon Valley, and we're really proud to have them here with us today. So, Todd, if you will, yeah, give us the PubNub story. Yeah, so PubNub is a company that provides uh, a global network, which is infrastructure for real-time applications. So, What's a real-time application? When we started the company six, seven years ago, we made this realization that the world was moving from applications that sort of requested data when they needed to. You know, you, you pull up social information, you, um, you wanted to see where something was, you asked a question, to ones where things were constantly moving and changing. So devices were emitting data and consuming data all the time. Uber was launching and everyone wanted to see where their taxi was now. Chat applications were getting big inside dating apps and B2B apps and B2C apps. And on top of that, IOT was exploding and people needed a way to control devices and turn lights on and off. And all the infrastructure that existed at the time didn't really address these real-time use cases. And so these companies were building that stuff themselves. So PubNub launched this thing we call a data stream network, but it effectively does three things. It allows you to connect to devices and leave an always on connection over the internet to deliver data bi-directionally to those devices, real-time message signaling in under a quarter of a second and then control the data going back and forth, so being able to provide logic. And so that core infrastructure, that sort of connect, deliver, control, powers everything from Peloton exercise bikes to Symphony investor chat applications, Athena Health, doctor, patient, nurse kinds of collaboration, and lots of IoT co companies from Logitech Harmony to uh, Samsung smart refrigerators. You know, across the board, uh, it turns out our infrastructure has been the, the, the key to making these real-time experiences come alive. Right. So, so you had this moment, I mean, startups usually do, they have, you, you hope you do, you reach a tipping point, right, of success. Yeah. And things work great. And, and you hit a boiling point, <laughs> in a way, you know, a few years back, to where things were working almost too well. Right. And, and that's how you got into InstaCluster. Tell us, give me that story, if you would, or share that with our folks watching. Yeah, absolutely, you know, it's funny. Um, I was talking to someone recently at Amazon, at AWS, who said we rarely talk to a company uh, your size that actually is doing more traffic than AWS is. Uh, and we, uh, we discovered we were doing um, more than twice as many messages, these control signals we talked about, uh, around our network, more than twice as many as the world's global SMS traffic. So, wow. you know, we were doing like close to 50 billion of these messages per day. So as you can imagine, uh, that's not a simple infrastructure. We, we, we store that data, we process it, we route it, we do all these things. And in one of our storage layers uh, built on Cassandra, we were really struggling with the expertise needed to scale this thing at the, ability, you know, at the, at the uh, size that we needed to scale it. And we hit a tipping point you know, about two years ago when we realized we really needed help and we needed help immediately. Right. Uh, and we had a lot of outreach to a lot of companies, including the company themselves that had created Cassandra. Um, but once we stumbled on InstaCluster, it, it, was, it was like you know, the, the clouds parting, right? All of a sudden we had folks from InstaCluster on with us 24 by seven, helping us you know, migrate, helping us move to a, a, a more, um, 
stable and scale infrastructure. And we've had this, you know, this ongoing relationship ever since. We now have them managing a lot of different uh, uh, uses of Cassandra within PubNub. Yeah. So, uh, it, infrastructure is. Uh, Sorry, InstaCluster is built on all of these open source technologies. You mentioned like, like Cassandra and Spark yeah, yeah. And, and Kafka. So what made you choose those technologies? What was it that was attractive about them and said, you know what, this is what we want to base our company on? Yeah, so customers are always basically looking for three things and I think Todd, Todd summed it up very well in his business. It's basically all about scalability. If your business is successful, you want to be able to scale massively as you get more and more customers. Uh, the second thing is reliability, which means the applications have got to be always on, always up and running. And the third thing is performance, which is all about latency and speed and feed and all that type of thing. We chose Cassandra because it is one of the most uh, popular, highly scalable databases. It's used by Apple and Netflix and big companies that have got millions of customers. So we generally pick technologies based on those three criteria. Mm -hmm. But we also focus on open source only for two reasons. Uh, number one, open source doesn't involve expensive license fees. So customers don't get locked in with expensive license fees. Uh, and, and number two, open source provides a degree of flexibility, mm -hmm. cloud independence. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to be locked into a specific cloud provider and you want to keep your options open in the future, choose open source. Okay, that's, that's a pretty compelling sort of argument there. And certainly, I think the world has discovered that open source is, is totally a thing that we should all be using. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when open source was verboten and you shouldn't be using it. <laughs> yes. And now it just seems to be everywhere. Yep. So, uh, what is it about InstaCluster that makes you special though? Because open source, anyone could use it. I could go and download it yep, yep. for free tomorrow. So, maybe I could attempt to steal PubNub's customers, or steal yep. your customers away. Yep. So, clearly that's not going to be possible uh, for me yep. to be able to do tomorrow. What is it about InstaCluster that you've, you've invested in this company that makes you so special, that, that means that PubNub is able to, to rely on you? Right, so, so I think the main thing is, we have 100% of our focus on operations. Uh, not on developing proprietary IP which we sell, which is the typical software model. We take the open source software and we actually manage it for our customers. So basically what that means is they, if they want to use Cassandra, they go to our website, they go to the customer portal, they choose the cloud provider they want to use, they choose the technology they want to use, what region do they want to run in, what size is their cluster, they press a button, and everything else is done behind the scenes by us. We do the provisioning, we install the software, and from that point on, we're managing it 24 by seven. So instead of, uh, for example, PubNub, having to build their own team for each one of these technologies, they can outsource it to us, we can do it much cheaper, and we can get them to market much faster if we're doing our job right. And, and it's all about the operations. So we can do it much cheaper and faster, and that's our main advantage. The other advantage is um, we manage all of these different technologies in the data layer, uh, which means that customers have one vendor they can go to to manage several different technologies. And it's all heavily, highly integrated from one vendor. That's a big, rather than having five different vendors to manage five different technologies, we provide the complete platform. Right. So Todd, what, what does this mean for you that you, now that you have this partner that you can rely on and that you can trust, what, what does that change for the business? What, what has that enabled you to be able to do now that you can look forward to say, you know what, well, we can do this to grow our business? That's a good question. You know, like, like InstaCluster, um, we operate PubNub. I mean, that customers pay us not for our technology, but for our ability to operate our technology at massive scale. And we provide five nines SLAs, which is a fancy way for saying if we, are, we have an outage for more than 26 seconds in a month, we provide credits back to our customers. So that's a really hard, high bar to fill. And so, um, philosophically, you know, we see ourselves as an operations company ourselves, right? And so we're very careful about who we would bring into the fold uh, as part of, of operations, right? Um, and so it has to be a, an organization that um, has the same security uh, levels that we do, SOC 2, Type 2 compliance, has the same understandings you know, and, and philosophy around operating things at high availability. Um, and can do it in a way that we feel like, you know, in, in many ways is a part of our team. And not some vendor that we don't know how to get on the phone, not some vendor that we don't really trust, right? It has to feel like 
um, like as part of our company. And, and so really it's only been InstaCluster that we've, we've been able to develop that trust around. And so it has absolutely allowed us to sort of focus on areas where, where we can do more innovation, right? While keeping the five nines SLAs, the 26 seconds minimum, you know, maximum of, of, of issues any month. Um, but allow us to focus a lot more on innovation and not on the things that, frankly, InstaCluster, as far as we can tell, is best in the world at, which is really operating this infrastructure, the, the, the Cassandra piece. And what do you want to take on then? You talk about innovation. If, if there is an area of your business, you say, all right, this is where 2019, I, where I want it to take right. us, what would that be? It's a great question. So, um, you know, one of the big changes for PubNub was that we built our initial business on the backs of other startups, and it was great. I mean, we, we got to some level of scale um, by powering a lot of innovative, interesting applications that were themselves trying to be the first real-time this and the first real-time that and the first real-time the other thing. Uh, and then about two years ago, something happened, a year and a half ago, that need for real-time, for, for having things update in real-time, inventory, prices, chat applications, moving things on a map, seeing where your trucks were, that went mainstream. And now even the largest companies in the world, if they release any kind of application, whether it's a business application or a consumer app, if it doesn't have that same real-time experience like an Uber or, or like a Snapchat, people kind of look at it and say, well, this feels like it was built 20 years ago, right? And so what's happened to our industry has been the moving of the need for this real-time experience into the mainstream. And that's been great for us. But it also means as we are selling to a larger and larger group of we call mainstream larger enterprise customers, um, the way we package our product, the way we make it consumable by larger companies, make it easier to deploy our product, make it easier to understand, and adding features that round that out is really the core of our, our focus right now, is really being able to appeal to, to, those, to, to those larger companies. We already have the scale. In fact, we recently participated in an event which was the Guinness Book of, uh, Guinness Book of World Records, the Guinness Book of Records uh, largest online event in history. Right. Um, and we powered the social of India for, for cricket. We powered the largest social interaction, over 10 million people synchronously going through our network all in one, in one virtual environment. So we know we can scale this thing beyond you know, any, any existing uh, sort of human need, and now it's really about making sure it's accessible to, to the world's uh, you know, largest companies. So it was cricket. In India? Yes. yes. I would have thought it was the, the Justin Warren fan club, but I guess not. I, I'm, you yeah, you, second online, right? Yeah. yeah There's a lot of people in India who love cricket. Yeah, and, I, I know that that. Girl, and they all have mobile phones. Yes, right. Well, so, gentlemen, yeah. thanks for being with us. Peter, Todd, yes. uh, continued success, and then thanks for being here on theCUBE. Okay, thank right, you very thank much. You so much. It's been a we, pleasure. Uh, thank you. We continue live coverage here from Las Vegas. We're in the Sands. We're here all week at AWS reInvent.